So when you use bash or any other shell, you've got all these like RC, profile, login, logout files, and you might be wondering what each of them should be used for. So today, that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding a little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm trying to hit 100 subs by the end of the year, and it looks like we're going to hit it by the end of November. So your help will be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So I would say that the ones that people are most familiar with would be Bash Profile and Bash RC or the equivalent in Z Shell would be uh, ZSHRC and Z Profile. So there's actually a third one for Bash that most people don't know about or don't use but is there. So there's also a Bash Logout. So Bash Profile, what that is typically used for, so I can actually bring up my shell and explain what mine do. What in the world just happened to my prompt? Anyway, doesn't really matter. I don't know what just happened there. Okay, ignore that. So, if we bring up my bash profile, so, what is it, bash profile? Cool. So, what you typically do in here is you will define things like your environment variables and also things like your script path, which is also an environment variable, I guess. So, this is run at login. So, we've also got one other thing in here that you can also use to tell that is run at login. So, this down here, basically what this will do is it will automatically start my X server and get i3 and all that running when I'm in TTY1, which is the default TTY. So, basically, what the bash profile is used for is it will be run by your login shell when you first log into the system and it will define all your environment variables and any other things you need done at login. And also I've got it so it will source my bash RC. So what your bash RC will do then, so what you do in here is you will do things that are used by your interactive shell. So that is just your normal shell. So every time you launch a terminal window, this bash RC file is run and it's used to do things like, for me, not too important, but I'm running NeoFetch right at the start, but more importantly, I'm doing things like setting all of my bash aliases and this is where you do that. I don't even think you can set them in your login or your, your bash profile. You might be able to, maybe, I'm not sure. I wouldn't recommend it, just do them in your bash RC because that is where they're known to work. So you can also do things like defining things like your prompt, you can set bash to vi mode like I'm doing up here, and basically everything that you do in your bash RC is the stuff that you want to do every single time that you open up a new terminal. So this is also true of your Z shell, uh, ZSH RC and what I said about the bash profile is true for the Z profile. So I also mentioned the bash logout. So I'm not actually using this because I don't really have anything to put in there. But your uh, bash logout is the opposite of your bash profile. So what the bash logout will do is it will be run when you log out of your shell. I don't, I think it's run just before you log out. So you can use it to clean up things on your system. So you could probably do something like dump your, I don't know, dump something to a log file. Like say you wanna, I don't know, dump your sound settings to a log file. You could do that in your bash logout, for example. So bash also supports two other sorts of profile and RC files. It supports your dot profile file and your dot input RC file. So I don't have an input RC, but I do have a profile. So basically what the, uh, bash, uh, sorry, what the regular profile file is, is I'm using it as just a sim link to my bash profile, but basically it's a system-wide configuration. So this will be used by all the shells that support a profile file. So this is actually a legacy file from a previous shell. I believe it was from the Born shell or something like that. But a lot of other shells have adopted this file as a generic way to write your profile file. So what I would recommend is if you have any very bash specific things, put them into your bash profile. But if they're things that are just generic that are POSIX compliant and will work on a various range of shells, then you can chuck that into your 
regular profile file. Or you can do what I'm doing because I don't plan to jump between different shells and just sim link them together. So I'm not currently running Z shell, but it actually does have some extra files that might be of interest if you don't want to use it. So Z shell has two different profile files. It has a Z profile and it has a Z login. So these files are basically the same thing, but the Z login is sourced before your Z shell RC. And it's pretty much there as a drop-in replacement for people who came from the uh, K shell. But they are basically equivalent to the bash profile counterpart and also the dot profile from the generic shells. So Z shell also has a Z env, which I believe you can use to define environment variables. So you could probably move those out of your profile or your login file. And I didn't mention this before, but Z shell has an equivalent to the logout file that bash has called the Z logout. So mentioning the logout file, I don't believe that there is a system wide version of the logout file. I tried to find one, but I can't seem to find it. So for the system wide stuff, there is only the profile and the RC file called the input RC. So now that I've explained like what all of those files are actually for, I guess I can look into my bash RC and basically talk about some of the things you should be wary of when you're using it. So bring my bash RC back up, if I can spell RC. So you want to be very careful about running certain programs in here because they're going to be run every single time you open up a terminal. So say for example with NeoFetch. NeoFetch is, it's not the quickest application, but it doesn't really delay me much. But I could do something like show my weather in NeoFetch and at least I'm pretty sure you can. You can display a lot of random stuff in NeoFetch. But the more you start putting into your bash RC, the slower it is to actually start using your terminal. So in here, we've got a couple of things. So we've got NeoFetch and this here is actually nice. So if the shell is not running interactively, it'll just cancel that instantly. So I don't end up wasting a bunch of time if I'm not in a mode where I can actually use my shell. So we're also doing things like setting my bash to via mode, which if you didn't know, you can actually use Vim style keys within bash. I typically like using it. You may have seen me use it a couple of times in some videos. So we've got this in here to copy output of my last command. And then basically the rest of this is all aliases. I don't really have much else until right at the bottom where I'm using my prompt command. So that is pretty much the only stuff you ever want to have in your bash RC. Even having NeoFetch in there is probably a bit much, but I do like having it there. If you start doing anything more, because you can do more, you could say you want to start up a, a logging session, you want to start doing some other stuff, you want to open some other programs. The more you start adding into this, the slower your terminal is going to get to actually load. It'll be fine once it's loaded, but that initial load time will just keep getting more and more and more. I would recommend avoiding that especially if you want to do any real work on your computer. So obviously I didn't go over all of the different RC and profile and login files for every different shell because they're all fairly similar. So if you're on something like FreeBSD, then you probably have something like a TSCHRC, which is for the extended C shell, or you may have something like the CSHRC, which is for the C shell. You might have a, a KSHRC, which is for the K shell. And there's other just different shells like this. Basically every single shell will have their own sort of RC file. I would be wary with something like the uh, FSHRC, I think it's called, for fish. Someone who knows fish, tell me what it's called. Because that shell isn't POSIX compliant. So if you do what I do and you sim link your different profile and your different RC files, you want to be very wary with shells that aren't POSIX compliant because you're going to start running into issues if you're switching between them because you're going to have command structures that don't directly transfer between them. So in those situations, I would avoid sim linking, but as long as you're using something sensible, like you're using bash, you're using Z shell, you're using T shell, you're using the C shell, anything that's POSIX compliant, there's not going to be any problem there. So if you couldn't tell by the end there, I was kind of dragging out time because we were done about three minutes ago. So I was trying to find some interesting stuff to talk about and I wanted to hit 10 minutes. So <laughs> 
because SEO, you gotta, you gotta maintain that perfect SEO. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you wanna see more videos like this or just random other show videos or maybe something completely different, leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. And if you wanna see those videos when they come out, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below and you'll probably get updates. But as always, YouTube can never be trusted to push updates to anyone. So also go follow my Twitter and my Mastodon and you'll probably get updates there. So up on that corner, I will have some sort of playlist it might be my Linux tutorial playlist, I reckon. Yeah, that's probably the best one. So go check that one out. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.